Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the world of multiband uh, processing. Um, and what is multiband processing? So think of an EQ. Uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll just go to my graph. So uh, we went EQ. We're gonna we're not gonna do reverb right now. Uh, we get to our multiband uh, dynamics processors, our uh, dynamics exciter and imager, right? Uh, these are very important, and they do magical things. So uh, by default, we go EQ. Yeah, we did that. Reverb, we're skipping that for now. Uh, and it's going to go, the audio stream is going to go into that dynamics processor, right? So we're going to select that. This is our dynamics. And this is uh, multiband dynamics. So um, what we have is we have four bands. So what's a band? A band is a section of the spectrum. Kind of like an EQ. Each of these is a band. It's affecting a, a frequency. Um, these are each affected. So we can solo this part right here. And that band dictated by its crossover is, you know, playing sound, which is awesome. And we can make that bigger or smaller. Right, so what is this doing for dynamics? So dynamics is a compressor. Um, the loudness and not loudness and the transients and the fluctuations in audio's amplitude is all being split, or the, the audio is being split into four bands and each independent compressor is uh, directly correlated with each, with each band. So generally, I'll start with the low end and I'll solo that. Right, and I can hear, hopefully you can hear it too, I can hear that the, the low end is really like flubby and it's, you know, it just goes around and, you know, it, it just bounces around too much. So uh, what I want to do is I want to compress it gently and subtly. So we have uh, three controls here on this meter. You're going to want to select this first. Uh, we have this one just, just think of this as a limiter and if you did a good mix and you're not clipping to begin with uh you really don't have to worry about this um but we're gonna use it anyway as like a fail safe so it's like a barrier so don't worry about this one this is the limiter this right here is the the compressor this is the the threshold right if you understand compression which i hope you do at least a small grasp of it um this is the threshold so when the audio goes above this threshold, it gets reduced, right? Right now it's not doing anything. There is no gain reduction. That's because our ratio is set to one to one. So one to one means nothing is going on, right? Uh, there's no reduction. So it's a one to one kind of ratio. So me, that means it's staying the same. So I want to move this to two, which is, you know, uh, I go to like two, four, eight, and then like, you know, beyond. So two is a nice kind of, you know, gentle uh, uh, compressor setting. And uh, we'll take a look at it now. See that red stuff right there? That is our gain reduction. And what I want you to do is kind of listen. Right? We still have like a lot of uh, movement in the bass, but it's been reduced uh, because we are compressing. The bass is still there. But that, that flubbiness from the kick is, you know, it's not, well, the flubbiness from the kick has been reduced and it's been tamed. This is the goal of multiband uh, compression. And all these other bands are unaffected. We're surgically working on one kind of section at a time. So, I don't wanna, so what I want to do is I want to have, you know, even more kind of smoothness. So I'll bring the, ta the attack up quite a bit. So uh, less attack means a more kind of compression. But you can't really hear like extreme compression on like lower end signals, which is where we are. hear that if you uh, increase the attack you hear more punchiness oh we'll do that in a different one right so i want i wanted that a bit smooth so so 
we have our low end kind of taken care of. Um, I've been doing this for a little while, so I can kind of tell. I don't know. Who knows, though? So we're going to select our second band, make sure this is selected. Uh, each one has a color, so red, yellow, or orange, or whatever that is, green, and then blue, right? So this is the mid-range. This is like like the not so much. It's kind of like the low-end punch and the, the mid-bass area, right? So we're going to select, again, a very gentle form of compression. And what we're trying to do with all this multi-band compression is to smooth it out. Because, you know, it's like right now, it's very it's very punchy, but it's just all over the place. It had a lot of problems screwing up. Yeah, so we're at a 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, we're going to kind of have our attack. I want to set it to 15. So 15 milliseconds of that punch is coming through. You know, I can completely eliminate the punch having a super fast attack. Zero milliseconds. Holy crap. No attack. But I can increase this to create more attack. Right, and that's a fun way you can use in your drums to create more punch, perceivably. But our threshold is too way down there. I moved my gain up because with all this compression reducing the volume. I'm going to do that for the bass later too. Once I find a balance, and this is a way to achieve balance in conjunction with a nice EQ. Right, you can hear that, right? I'm bypassing it. Check this out. Right, we're smoothing it out and we're taming all the, those dynamics which, you know, could sound uh, over-compressed if we did this with a compressor on the master channel, but we're doing it in a multiband way, which is more pleasing in sound. It, it makes more sense. So we're going to work on this one right here. And uh, this, you know, this could require uh, maybe, yeah, 1.5 to 1. And I'll just bring the threshold down. Right. And then for this guy. You want to, for the higher end, the higher frequencies you want to play these both at the same time just so you have like continuity because if you play this it's just hiss right so you want to play this at the same time while you're kind of altering this and uh, always two to one two to one just sounds great for these types of applications all right so we will play them all at the same time Right, so we killed it a little bit. So we'll lay off the compressor a bit. That's what. But if we we could just leave that. That's what the post EQ is for. You know, we could bring these back. Or we could use a, our gain. This is kind of like a makeup. Well, it is basically a makeup gain. So to me, that sounds a bit better. So on to, okay, well, what is the next thing we're working on? Uh, we have our dynamics, our exciter. Uh, this is easily overdone. And what it is, is it offers a uh, harmonically pleasing uh, kind of tape effects, uh, pleasing distortion. And uh, generally, it can kind of smear but in a good way, it can smear your mix in a good way. So we'll check that out now. Right, tube, you know, obviously tubes are sought after. Tube on the low end. Very gabbery. Um, the one trick. The one trick is to use it just a little bit. So I don't even do that. I use tape on my low end. So what it does is it kind of smears it, and I only use it that much, and I bring the mix down. You know, you can use it to an extreme. So less is more, more or less. 
So for this, let's uh, let's bring the amount up and uh, find a mode. There's warm reto tape tube triode uh, and dual triode. Triode is more punchy. So I mean, tape is very. It has a smearing effect. So if you if you have like a lot, a lot of like super dynamics and super duper transients of doom, um, what you can do. Did I just screw that up. No, oh, no, I didn't. What you can do uh, is just uh, use a slight bit of tape um, saturation uh, or excitation to smear it. But if it's not punchy enough. Use the triode and the dual triode. Why not? Right. So we're cooking now. We're we're in the stage of the mastering process that I like. I like to call cooking. Right. It's like using you know, for example, PSP vintage warmer and just cooking the sh shit out of your drums. Basically, that's what I swear. Uh, for this, uh, I guess we could do triode. Why not? See, it adds a bit of punch. It does something to the transients, which is very interesting. And again, tape smears it. You understand? We're trying to clean up the dynamics. Not kill them, but kind of clean them up and make everything sound like one cohesive mix. Tape saturation is the bee's knees. I'm just gonna leave that. That hiss sounds okay to me. we can do if we were crazy uh, we have our limiter here uh, we can make sure well this is, this is pretty much a good idea so where it's kind of where you would not be comfortable with the audio peaking you could bring the limiter there so this basically this is a multi-band uh, dynamics processor uh, each one has a compressor a limiter and a gate we're not going to worry about the gate right now but the limiter prevents it from going over a threshold so you're using two compressors in series so we absolutely don't want certain things to go over a certain um, velo or amplitude All right there we go All right so now uh, we are off to what is the next thing stereo imaging very neat so this is the perceived wideness of an audio signal. Are these messing up my other guys? No, they are not. You best not. Um, so I, I guess I'll show you, I don't know what it sounds like, mono. The right sounds cool, mono. But it sounds even better in stereo. But there's certain things you don't want in, uh, there's certain things you don't want with a, a super wide stereo image, which would be, for example, the low end. Right, you want that to be, you know, mono, but not completely mono. And this little uh, stereo readout uh, shows your stereo image. So a straight line. This is 100% just collapsed, collapsed bandwidth. 100% means we're very mono, and the straight line means we're very mono. Say if I have up here, we have a lot of stereo image right here. And a, whole lot, and a whole lot more, it just spreads out more. So generally, for the low end, you want uh, a very uh, narrow uh, stereo image. So we'll play these at the same time. You know, so it, it's kind of gradual. So the low end is very mono, the high end is wide, right? Uh, your bass, you know, bass is not stereo, right? A subwoofer, you don't have two subwoofers. Well, I don't know, but you don't have two subwoofers, and uh, you, the human ear can't pick up where bass is coming from. Bass is very, you know, low-end and monaural and bassy. 
right? So we'll do that, and we can, you know, increase the wideness if we are so inclined. Uh, you can get get away with more at the super high end here. If you want more spread. Probably killing it, but you know, my ears are all messed up because we're later in the evening. Uh, so, yeah, that is a uh, basic rundown of the multi band uh, processing. Uh, and it's your dynamics, um, which is very, very basic. Uh, generally, you want to polish this off a bit more uh, to get. Uh, you can use it, you can use uh, these dynamics uh, plugins like this to, uh, you can smooth things out, but you can also create more movement. You can make more punch. You can make things kind of louder, which I might get into in the other ones. Um, and yeah, we have uh, our exciter, which is completely less is more. You can really drive things, or you can use it subtly. And uh, here's what it sounds like subtly. You know, a small, small amount, you know, amount, AMT, of uh, distortion really goes a long way. Uh, you don't crank these, you just use them very, very subtly. Uh, we have our dynamics. Yeah, and a stereo imaging is this, is, this makes uh, a stereo balance, and I'll show you what that sounds like on and off. You know, for trance music, it's very wide to begin with. You want it the end. You want the end result to be very wide, and uh, that's what we basically have done here. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. The mono compatibility. Mono compatibility. Uh, that's always a good idea. Uh, you can click this mono button, and it sounds like and listen to what it sounds like with everything kind of collapsed. And it sounds okay. Uh, and if it sounds good mono as well, then uh, it'll sound good anywhere, basically. Uh, mono compatibility, it's it was mainly for like TV and radio, but you know, for dance music and stuff like that. And modern clubs, modern clubs, you know, are stereo. And yeah. All right, um, yeah, hope you learned stuff, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully I didn't ramble too much. All right, take care.